Hello, Akira here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, like the res and speed videos, we're going to be taking a look at another stat. This time, we're going to be looking at HP, both generally and in the specific case of what I believe to be the best game at highlighting its value as a resource, Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Lentia. So, I guess the stat video trend continues. Though this may sound basic, let's start off with an overview of HP as a stat and its implications for traditional Fire Emblem combat. If you want, you can, of course, skip this and go straight to the section on Echoes via the timestamps in the video progress bar or description. HP stands for Hit Point or Health Points. The former is a term that was coined by one of the creators of the tabletop RPG, Dungeons and Dragons, Dave Ameson. The more personalised nature of the characters lend itself better to a system where rather than dying in one interaction, like many other games, both player and enemy units are able to survive potentially several hits. The basic concept is simple. If you have zero HP, you can take no more hits, i.e. you are dead. Artificially setting units HP to zero tends to be bad for them. In some games, like Sacred Stones, they automatically die after taking an action, and in others, like Radiant Dawn, they simply die upon taking damage. Conversely, if you have more than zero, your unit is alive and can perform various actions. This is what leads to the saying, the only point of HP that matters is the last one. Of course, this is not, strictly speaking, completely true. This scenario on screen would be exactly the same if Erica had 1 or 9 HP rather than 7. Especially since Fire Emblem traditionally has permadeath, if a unit dies, they are probably dead for the entire game rather than just for the rest of the map, as is the case in some other SRPGs such as Triangle Strategy, or even some FE hacks like Server 72. Given that you can know the exact amount of damage being dealt, this is a big part of why all stats in Fire Emblem are ultimately threshold stats, with there being a myriad of different thresholds even within any given map. Still, it is undeniably true that there is less of a gap between being able to survive 0 or 1 hits compared to other non-zero benchmarks like 1 and 3, other than 0 and 2 in the case of Brave Weapons. A unit that is able to survive even a partial round of combat with any given enemy it can potentially be left in range of them if no one else on enemy phase or initiate a non-lethal round of combat where they will not kill without facing near guaranteed death on the counter. You have to be much more careful when it comes to positioning units who don't have the raw one-shotable bulk from HP and usually one of defense or res to survive such an interaction. That being said, it is not the case that just because units will not be able to survive this hit Using them is inherently a risk if you have a way to make sure that they will not be hit. As an example from his own video on HP as a resource, fellow FE tuber John Abo used the example of Franz and Artur from FE8 both taking a hit. There he makes the point that if Artur isn't going to be seeing further damage due to, for instance, the flexibility magic affords him for 1-2 range, or just being used to finish off enemies, it may be better for him to take the hit rather than Franz, even though Franz would take less damage than Arta would in that specific round of combat. The same principle can also apply to games with more complicated combat mechanics. In Fates, you can take advantage of a full guard gauge to take a round of combat on either phase that you would otherwise die for taking. And then in Engage, you can use Chain Guards or Emblem Lucina's Bonded Shield to achieve a similar survivability effect on enemy phase only. But yeah, that mostly covers the basics of how HP works as a resource while sticking with general Fire Emblem gameplay tenets rather than focusing heavily on game-specific moments. The main reason why I want to make this video is because of said game-specific moments, though. Namely, Echoes or Guidance-specific moments, as I believe it takes HP as a resource further than any other individual game in the series does, and Jono made his HP video before he had played Echoes. Firstly, the Valentia games only having one inventory slot means that compared to other FE games where you usually have anywhere between 5 and 8 inventory slots, your ability to carry around healing items on your non-lord units, and therefore use them, is much more limited. If possible, it's usually better to use your inventory slot on an actual weapon or an accessory like a ring or shield. As a result, you have to be more aware of the HP values of your various units and their proximity to a source of healing, such as Recover, Physic, or the Provisions option available while next to the Lord. Speaking of using Recover and Physic, the magic system of Gaiden and Echoes also contributes to the value of HP as a stat, due to the casting of all non-Nosferatu spells costing HP as recoil. Even just for the basic fire spell which costs 1 HP to cast, the HP drained from casting spells, 
especially when facing multiple enemies in a single turn and doubling, and contribute greatly to unit fragility. This is a big part of why outside of Salka, you can use swords to avoid expending HP to simply attack. A starting group of magical units feels so squishy. By extension, this is part of why so many people value the joining of Saber as a frontline unit. Despite his bulk not actually being that much better than Salka's, spell HP drain can also lead to funny moments, where due to not having enough HP to cast, magical units taken down to very low amounts of HP may lose the ability to counter entirely. Then, in addition to offensive magic, this also applies to utility spells. At its most basic, recover costing 1 HP to cast means that your healer needs to be either adequately healed up or occasionally using Nosferatu as piss for 60 hit. And it makes sense. In the absence of weapon durability or spell charges, having no HP cost for recover could potentially allow for literally endless turtling. This is compounded especially with further utility spells such as Warp, 8 HP cost, or Rescue, 6 HP cost, which combined with Cleric's generally low HP values can limit the power of movement spells in this largely round game. Though this is basically a non-factor due to how late it appears, level 14 Saint on Fae, this is also true for a new, a hugely expensive 24 HP cost dance. The overall result of spells in Valentia, both offensive and utility, costing HP, is that magic in its various forms feels very different from physical weapons, due to hitting on the usually lower res stat of enemies and highlighting the typical fragility of mages. This is more than can be said for many other games in the series. The notable exception to this for physical weapons is, of course, the combat art system introduced in Echoes, which once again requires HP cost as a balancing measure, given Echoes has no weapon durability. Other than Hunter's Volley often just being the objectively best choice due to the huge 1-5 bow rate on snipers and bow knights, the HP cost for combat arts in exchange for their various effects can make using them a genuine consideration over just attacking conventionally. It is also something that I prefer Echoes' cost implementation of over three houses. There, outside of Amir for Raging Storm, I feel basically zero need to consider weapon durability, because most weapons you can fix up with very plentiful smithing stones. Even in the case of Amir, with the Agarthium from breaking the Titanus shields in Chapter 16 of Crimson Flower, it is still mathematically possible to take advantage of Raging Storm and other tools to one-turn every Crimson Flower map without skirmishes. So I find the HP consideration in Echoes to be more generally tactically meaningful than the weapon durability consideration in Free Houses. Lastly, one final small way of HP as a resource mastering in Echoes is the fact that minimum damage is set at 1. This is not unique to Valentia, also being present in FE's 1, 3, and 4. 1 is such a small amount of damage that, realistically, it doesn't meaningfully affect tanking hits, but can matter in niche cases. At the least, it does slightly narrow unwinnable battles, and also prevents cases like Conquest or Engage Maddening AI, where enemies will never attack units they deal no damage to, which can feel disproportionately harsh to traditional tanks like armors, who are not known for being good in the first place. That being said, there are still additional ways that HP as a resource has been iterated on and explored in series that aren't covered in Echoes. For example, though Vengeance does exist in a form as a combat art called Vendetta on the Doomer's Lance, it is obviously much more well known as a personal combat art from Free Houses on Bernadetta especially. Here it scales with HP lost on a one-to-one -one basis and isn't locked to a specific weapon, leading to very funny moments with training Lance plus Vengeances, for instance. There are also non-combat art low health build skills, such as Wrath and Vantage in various forms, and more game-specific ones such as FE4 Miracle and Reprisal slash Plus from Engage, the most recent FE game as of the time of writing this script. Then lastly, the biggest example I can think of that makes HP a viable bulk stat specifically is the existence of penetrating or true damage, where damage is dealt purely based on HP values, ignoring the defense or res stat. While this has existed in many games, such as the Lunar spell and skill in its different iterations, some dragon enemies, such as the FE7 Fire Dragon, FE8 Necro Dragons, and Engage Worms, or various other true damage sources or true damage negation, like some personals, other skills, and chain attacks from Engage. Its very first iteration actually stems in a sense from the very first Fire Emblem game. Here, the non-existence of res as a stat outside the usage of talismans, barrier staves, or pure waters 
means that magic can basically be considered to be a fixed damage attack. Especially in Engage, true damage is a really interesting way to make the low HP of certain class types matter in certain circumstances, such as sages at the HP cap with no other HP augmentation, always being one shot by the chapter 25 Maddening Corrupted Worms if hit. It also provides an enemy that's guaranteed to be able to damage whatever tank you have without additional setup like a chain guard, thereby introducing an obstacle who can really chunk if not outright kill many of your units. The anti-juggernauting nature of true damage is also present in chain attacks, which greatly limits the ability of protection tanks without Corrin's Bond 13 pair-up skill to act as choke points against the multiple enemies. Additionally, for low strength or magic units, the existence of things like Alir's personal or chain attacks provides a way for units to be able to clinch kills and thus gain experience they otherwise wouldn't be able to. This can help players to train units they really want to use if they have damage issues until they are, hopefully, actually able to deal damage without extra assistance. However, that is not to say that true damage is always handled well. The main example of true damage handled poorly is in the form of FP7 Luna, which completely ignores res and, unpleasantly, has 20 crit. Despite having no might, functionally having the might of the target's res, three times the user's magic tends to exceed many units' HP values, meaning they are liable to die to a not unlikely crit. This is also the case in hacks that use FE7 Luna's stats, rather than later series iterations like fe 8 that remove this crit chance. Still, as mentioned, later iterations did remove this crit value, so thankfully it's just been an FE7 one-off. So yeah, that's been a quick look at HP as a stat and resource. I hope you enjoyed it. Special thanks to my friend and fellow FETuber Jono Abo for reading through the script for me and providing the original inspiration for this video in the form of his own video on HP as a resource. If you're interested, a link to it will be in the description and also the end cards for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider letting me know in some form, whether it be through liking the video or subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on HP as a final stat as well, either in the comment section of the video proper or over in the community discord which you can find a link to in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Until then, have a good one.